Okay, I now have two large transports. The research of the mammoth has been completed and I build one of them. And I'm going to use them to deploy the rest of the jump beacons and then we can start our big uh, expansion wave. I've also replaced the satellite factory with a quantum tube factory. Quantum tubes are always a bit short in supply because they need so many steps to be produced. It's the most complica uh, complicated commodity in the game. And uh, even if I don't have an ore supply, which is needed for the quantum tubes, uh, I'm still trying to get the ore from the NPCs for now and uh, produce my own quantum tubes. It's not that I'm incredibly short of, but uh, we're getting more and more trouble to get steady parts because as you can see the fighting between these factions is picking up. We have a ton of battles happening in this area. A crap ton of loot. Unfortunately I don't have any means to grab it for now. And um, yeah, that makes the, the factories a bit short in supply. Because the factions need so many parts to rebuild their ships. Okay, so let's build more jump beacons. I should have an ample stock of jump drive cores. Yeah, we can build six more beacons if we want. So let's do that. And the station factory. And then I'm going to load them up into my Yeah, two of them in my faster transport, the Mammoth. Because I already lost one jump beacon to the Xenon. They got a sneaky, sneaky scout in this sector here and destroyed it. Or actually they infected it and took it over. Even if I had some stationary defenders, so I'm going to increase their strength a bit. Yeah, these big cap ships, they are very powerful, but if the enemy brings enough numbers, then even they can't do much. I'm so glad that I finally figured out how to make the missiles more resilient against laser fire because they would actually be destroyed by these green laser bolts on their way to the enemy. And I figured out how to make missiles invulnerable uh, against laser fire. So chaff will be the only way to destroy them. And that also allowed me to keep the larger bullet hitboxes so that lasers are more accurate. That caused a lot of missiles to be randomly get shot down. And there was no way of properly using them. But if they are uh, immortal against laser fire, then uh, they are much more useful now. Okay, my second large transport, which is slower, will get the rest of the jump beacons. Jump. And I'm placing one in my home system, because I forgot that last time. Just put it in there, and then he's going to make his way to the south area. I want to put one here and one here. Yeah. Command 
Yeah, I have uh, reduced the size of the main battle fleet a bit, simply by uh, recycling the older and slower ships. You can actually do that quite easily. Now, Right now they are docked to my home outpost. And if I simply tell all fleet ships to fly to my sector, then they will undock. Now they're in space. And then you can go to the maintenance screen and sort by cost, for example, and then look at these ships. I named my fleet uh, the Crow Fleet then simply look for ships which have a very high cost and then you could click on them and then that would make them dock and there you could uh, recycle them. You don't have to do this very often but uh, some of the especially slower ships they can uh, survive longer and that could make their f uh, maintenance factor grow very large but uh, for fighters it's actually not that uh, required. It was just uh, because I don't need this fleet right now. So I didn't want to uh, spend all that money on them. But it's actually not much. As you can see, I only have to pay 5000 credits every 10 minutes. That's really not much. And it will get bigger if you have more ships. Uh, but for now, this it's really not a problem. How do I secure my jump beacons? Well, that's an interesting topic. But the best way to do this, uh, from my experience, is to use a very small fleet and let them simply defend a stationary location. So I now have jump beacons in this system, in this system here, and also in the sector I want to use as the uh, kind of fortress against the split. And I'm simply using two ships. As I said, they, I already lost one jump beacon to the Xenon, so I might increase that to three ships so that they kill the scout faster. And the fleet leader is just a cheap scout. Doesn't do anything, doesn't have weapons. Uh, he's just there to uh, basically have something sit at a stationary position near the jump beacon and then we have a powerful fighter as his uh, yeah, follower, fleet follower and as soon as the Xenon scout approaches to infect the jump beacon the follower will pick um, the Xenon scout up and kill him and the settings for these fleets are like this. I basically disabled retreat so that they always stay in position. I disabled any commander scanning range so the commander won't do anything. Only the followers are attacking and that makes the fleet stay in one position. And then we have the follower scanning range and that is going to pick the Xenon up and uh, take him out. I also enabled this auto renaming feature to keep everything nice and organized. And then you can simply order reinforcements. So for now I just uh, decided to use one fighter. But as I said, I'm going to ramp that up now so that we have two ships guarding each beacon. And I don't know if uh, in this Mayhem version the strength of the attack increases. So that could be the case. But I'm only aware of uh, small Xenon scouts which are attacking your beacons. So I'm going to use two fighters now. You can simply add a template with two ships to the reinforcements. And then the outpost will automatically build the ship. Which is needed. So we will soon get the production message that another Perseus is in construction of and he will get built at my outpost and then he will take the jump beacon and teleporting bridge to that sector and join the defending fleet. So the uh, reinforcements is a nice 
a nice feature to keep certain fleets at certain strength levels. And what I have also been doing is earning a lot of reputation. And I think uh, a lot of players are not aware how you can do that uh, without killing a lot of enemies. Uh, usually uh, you're only able to earn a large amount of reputation if you kill something like uh, Exenon Patrol or any other strong enemy because you can't ki really kill other factions ships because you can't go to war with them yet uh, but you can also earn a reputation a lot of reputation from doing these uh, missions here especially the trade missions are getting uh, increasingly more attractive later on and what I'm doing is simply having a lot of small scouts running to these factories which have a mission and then uh, taking the mission and these provision missions are really good because uh, when you are more established you have the resources to fulfill them quite easily so once you have an outpost which has basically everything on stock you can simply load all these wares in uh, any ship and then uh, go in an area where you uh, activated a lot of these trade missions and fulfill all of them at once. This one here is a second-hand ship mission but most trade missions will be these provision missions where you have to deliver a certain amount of goods and you can actually pick multiple of them up with smaller scouts and then fulfill the mission with a large transport which is simply carrying all the goods that you need for all these missions all them to that area and uh, On of German CEO, the mission completed. and uh, get a lot, of, a lot of reputation because you're earning between 500 and 1000 reputation for these trade missions and if you're doing multiple of them then that is a really good way to earn your reputation so, for example, I'm already at 17,000 reputation with the Teladi, which is insane for my uh, current stage in the game. And uh, such amounts are usually not reachable because you would need to kill a lot of stuff. But you can't do that until you have a strong battle fleet. So these trade missions are actually very good really the first game where I really utilize this uh, to the fullest and it's insanely good. So let's see where we can send these scouts. So simply have a bunch of ships in this area here for example and I'm simply moving them between different sectors and uh, be on the lookout for these trade missions. They will spawn and despawn after some time. And once you have gathered a bunch of them, you can simply take a look at your personal journal and then load these resources into a freighter and visit the factory again and then you will get a lot of extra cash so the value of the goods with a bonus and then a lot of reputation so let's see if we have a large freighter oh they are still on their way Once they are back home, I will load them up and do these missions. And usually the game is more about the uh, automation. But I think uh, in the early game, I still consider myself uh, 
being in the absolute early game, still, even if I have all these ships here, that might seem much, but it's... I'm really not that strong at this point. We are now roughly two days into the game. And uh, I still consider this uh, maybe the end of the early game or something. And uh, usually the game is all about automation, but I think in the early game this is really uh, beneficial to do these, to, to go on the hunt for these missions. For example, I also have two patrols. These are just... Uh, Yeah, let's quickly teleport over there. These are just small fighter wings of three ships. And I have been doing uh, these combat missions. For example, here is one. So you could dock at that factory, take the mission. You can also do that remotely with a scout. And then have these small combat uh, patrols um, and to do the missions. I started to realize that my fight rank is getting a bit high because the Xenon which do spawn from these missions are getting really powerful and I'm always losing ships against them. So I would probably need to increase my patrol size a bit. But I also have activated the reinforce feature. So if the fleet takes a loss then the outpost will instantly rebuild the losses. So you don't have to manage that at all. Which is very nice. Yeah, then I have been doing some more taxi runs for the Argons. But there's really not much we can do. I also don't get any missions for them. So I have to wait until I, they take more sectors and then we can properly interact with them again. And that part shouldn't be that far away for now. Just need to place the rest of the jump beacons and then we can do all that good stuff. 